Have you recovered from the royal show? Emotionally, yes. Financially, no. When the f*** did a birdie beetle bag cost $8? Was I looking at the right one? It was like a <laughs> platinum edition or something? Birdie beetles don't warrant precious metal status. That bag belongs in the shit part of the periodic table next to barium. <laughs> oh, dear. There's half a gram of cocoa in the whole thing. It barely meets the definition of chocolate. Birdie beetles are made out of sugar and sand. Stop! He's already dead. A Dagwood dog is now eight dollars. Eight bucks for the bits of the animal nobody else wanted, moulded into the shape of a dick and put on a stick. Eight dollars. You don't even really ever own it. You rent a Dagwood dog. It's designed to be in the human body for a maximum of eight minutes. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Not exactly ever been a cheap day out to go to the Royal Show. Well, it starts before you even get through the gates at the moment. The people who live around the showgrounds are now charging 20 even $25 to park on their verges, which they don't even own, the council does, but that's not stopping them from monetising every single square inch. $10 per axle. There's something wrong about the Claremont Chardonnay set rinsing lobsters from Balga's bourbon drinkers. If you work for the ATO and you're watching this, you need to audit every household within a five minute walk of the showgrounds. They get a free fireworks display every night, so they may as well pay some tax on the profits. Well, at least Mark McGowan made it a bit cheaper to get in this yeah, year. The government stumped up $2 million, so tickets could be discounted by 25%, which Mark McGowan's constituents in Rockingham took full advantage of. Am I the only bloke that doesn't have a neck tattoo at the moment? It is just so bogan down there. It's like people who go to the Quinana Motorplex have come to the western suburbs seeking a cultural awakening at the spiritual home of motorsport. And the fashion crash of roll them over stock cars. Tash Peterson was there making a complete dick of herself. She was arrested after she locked herself to a cattle judging ring, shouting things like, animals have families just like us. Her message didn't get through to the family I saw in one of the ag pavilions looking at the cute piglets while sucking on double fried pork knuckles. Oh no. Oh no. Literally patting a piglet while inhaling its mum. Don't worry about wood chopping. We need a salad dodging competition. Nonsense. I know exactly how heavy I am. That wasn't even the grossest thing at the pavilion. Did you know there is such a thing as a hairless guinea pig? Mm -hmm. Looks like something Dr Evil's cat coughed up. Look what you did to Mr Brigglesworth! It was like looking at a cage full of Sean scrotums. Hey, don't knock it till you try it. I don't know how the average royal show visitor makes their money. Actually, I do. But my God, they can spend the cash. You used to see people hanging show bags off the pram. Remember that? Now they actually bring in separate pull-along trolleys to load up. A couple of years from now, they'll be driving the Ford Ranger and the Hilux down Sideshow Alley. Mm, hold on to your wallet there. Oh, my God, isn't that like a mafia shakedown? It's like Boardwalk Empire comes to the Golden Triangle once a year. I take the risk out of it. How do you manage that? By rigging the game, of course. Rides are now... 12 bucks. F***ing carnies. Circus folk. Nomads, you know. I timed the ghost train. It lasted 45 seconds. I don't even know why you bother paying. If you want to be scared by some freaks, just stand in the line for two minutes. Smell like cabbage. You know those machines where you put 20 cents in and then it spills down and then pushes the other 20 cents out? That's now one dollar. And the coins never drop. That's got to be prima facie evidence of a crime. Is the police exhibition still there? Well, it wasn't open by the time we got there, unfortunately. So I didn't get to see the kids of the Mongols bike. He's tormenting the police cadet who drew the short straw and had to be constable care for the day. Now, would you both like to help me do some of my police work? Well, would we? Yeah, but I think it's a good thing that the police cadets are part of the show. Yeah, I saw one of them. I'm not joking. He looked 12. Fortunately, we aren't going to need any smart, experienced cops anymore because we're passing new laws that will prevent violent thugs from being violent thugs. Actually, that's not true. We're passing new laws that will allow us to ask violent thugs not to be violent thugs in certain nightlife areas. But if they choose to anyway, there's really nothing we can do about it because the new laws are largely ungovernable. Well, exactly. How is a cop on the beat going to know who shouldn't be well, there? Well, they won't. But the death of Giuseppe Racco in 2020 put the heat on the government to do something. Two years after the man known as Pep was killed in a one-punch attack, the government has unveiled a plan for protected entertainment 
precincts. You just know someone in the government media office was high-fiving themselves on that one. Maniacs convicted of violent offences in five separate areas of Perth will be banned from entering said areas for up to five years. Problem is, there are only a few hundred cops on the beat in those areas compared with tens of thousands of people doing things like this. So unless you're an officer right there while someone on a PEP order is doing something like this, there's bugger all chance of anyone getting busted. You're under arrest! You can't arrest me. I didn't do anything. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.